came up to me and said, I want to do a um, storytelling series. And then I was like, fine, great, do it. You know, and so he started really the whole progress. I was just providing the space. And we got more and more involved and it. We love it. I said, well, let's make it realer than that. Let's do a storytelling series that takes into account the narratives of people's lives and um, not so much the entertainment value of stories which often are told in New York in a stage setting. I think it's amazing that it's a small space. Like we have another lecture series that's also, you know, taking place in a small space. But it helps to create the sense of community and intimacy that you wouldn't have in a larger space. Given the sort of the magnitude of a lot of the things that have been happening in the news and in the world and that we've been hearing about, we thought that we would do a slightly more focused um, evening to kind of centralize the stories, you know, maybe bring to the fore stories that we maybe aren't always hearing. Um, and so we came up, we worked together and came up with a, type, a theme called silent violence. What is silent violence? Violence can come in so many different forms, right? There's so many different ways in which we disregard violence within the family. Kimberly, who lived in NYCHA housing, uh, public housing with her wife. The violence in that relationship came to a head when Kimberly's partner attacked her one night and stomped repeatedly on her leg and her and her feet and until she actually broke her ankle. Kimberly was able to to call 911 and the police showed up and do you know what they said? If you want to press charges against her, we have to take both of you in. But my ankle is broken. Clearly, I am the person that is the victim here. And they said, nothing I can do about it. It can be a bit stressful because you have to think about the theme and you have to try and figure out, okay, who are people who are going to tell these stories? First of all, tell good stories and then tell stories in the way that we want them to be told. It's a family problem. You know, I talked about sort of the personal ways in which I was affected by violence um, or my family has been. And I see so much every day that talking about it feels natural. This was a really difficult one to to book. Mm -hmm. I think we both had trouble with it. You don't want to walk up to someone and say, you're marginalized, <laughs> tell us a story. <laughs> Honestly, we came up with some amazing storytellers and um, I kind of just want to sit down and listen and hear what people have to say. With all these shootings that were happening, it was just taking a toll on people's souls, you know? I mean, it's only so much that you could take. Especially as a person of color, you know, seeing this in the news, just, it's basically like a template, you know? <laughs> like, blank person gets shot by police because of blank, you know, insert unjust reason. For me, as a black man in America, I have to be mindful of my surroundings because, and it's not even a matter of, I can be next, but it's that, you know, because, you know, thank goodness for the media, I guess, you know, I am put under that typecast of a person that could be next. I'm at risk, so to speak. I'm hoping that they could take away just in a sense that the movement itself is more than just a hashtag and that, you know, it's actual people that are being affected by this. And I think that the lack of accountability when it comes to the people that you know, are the perpetrators in these cases is just sickening. For those of you who aren't familiar necessarily with exactly the, the, the terms and the conditions of what cruising looks like, it's a way in which um, frequently gay men pick one another out of heteronormative dominant spaces. You know, there's reasons such as, pick, you know, to say that I'm attracted to you and I'd like to, you know, figure out where this may lead or this is not a safe space for us, we need to kind of get the hell out. And this was actually a very common, um, historically speaking, this is a very common way that cruising uh, was, was used, is, is um, sort of to protect and connect um, gay men uh, and, and to create some sort of community in this way. It felt really good afterwards. Just the release of, of kind of sharing my experiences and my emotions with the audience. 
um, made it a little bit easier to live some of those truths. If you say how to build a fire to somebody, they can take it one or two ways. One way you can take it is like sitting around a campfire and having a, a storytelling event, you know, with family members. But the way that I had envisioned it is a story doesn't live until it's still told a second time. One thing that's very specific to this series is that the reiteration of stories ends up building them in ways that actually have a chance to succeed in our neighborhoods and in our New York community. And we do have a real community and real New Yorkers come together and have these kind of conversations. And if we actually have conversations about these stories, then we can build upon them.